how armed forces kill and wound many leaders of terrorist groups in Damascus and Homs countryside. Nearly 100 people are killed and wounded in a series of terrorist explosions in Iraq. Egyptian legal organizations call for repeating the first stage of the constitutional referendum because of violations in the process. Good afternoon, this is Yara Krikorian with the news in English. Our Syrian Arab army continued to chase the terrorist groups targeting their gatherings and hideouts in several areas. In Damascus countryside, a unit of our Syrian Arab army killed a number of terrorists and seized their weapons in an operation carried out in the town of al Diabiye. The operation led to the killing of the terrorist Ghassab al-Manzouri as well as three other terrorists. Also in the town of Arbin, Damascus countryside, a unit of our Syrian Arab army army killed many terrorists at the square of Ghbeir and destroyed their weapons. Units of our Syrian Arab army continues chasing the terrorist groups, raiding their hideouts and gatherings. A unit of our Syrian Arab army clashed with a terrorist group in al Samailil and Burjqai in Homs countryside, killing many terrorists including Munir Harmouche, Wissam Saour and Zahir Bakr, destroying their motor gun and machine guns. Residents of a Sabil neighborhood in Aleppo took out into the streets in a huge march yesterday supporting the Syrian Arab army against the terrorist groups and calling for the expulsion of terrorists from Aleppo and its countryside. Hundreds of a Sabil residents marched denouncing the criminal acts of the armed terrorist groups and their repeated attacks on the residents' properties as well as on the electricity and water networks which led to their malfunction. The marchers chanted slogans for the Syrian Arab army calling on it to speed up operations in order to accomplish its mission in eliminating all hotbeds of terrorism so that security would be maintained in all parts of Aleppo and its countryside. The Iranian Foreign Minister Ali Akbar Saleh asserted that the deployment of Patriot missiles on Turkish territory would be a provocative step which dire consequences. He said this step would never serve the security of this region. In Paris, the French National Front criticized the government's attitude to the crisis in Syria and its recognition of Al-Dawha coalition. The leader of the Front, Marine Le Pen, expressed surprise over this attitude. She said that France wanted to be the first to extend this recognition. But what does the government want to recognize? She warned against the intervention of some Western countries in Syria because that would bring to power a system consisting of Islamic extremist radicals like the case in Libya. The honorary leader of the front, Jean-Marie Le Pen, asserted that his defense of Syria was the basic role of justice and common sense. He pointed out that the problem in France was the result of a process of brainwashing about events in Syria. In Iraq, dozens of Iraqis were killed and many others wounded in a series of terrorist blasts that took place in the cities of Toz Khermato, Baquba, Takrit and Mosul. Two car bombs exploded in the neighborhood of Jamila in Toz Khermato, killing at least five people, wounding 26 others and destroying 16 houses. In Al Mosul, a car bomb exploded in the village of Khazna, killing five civilians and wounding 12 others. Similar scenes were witnessed in Baquba and al Salibi, where a series of car bombs and explosive devices blew up, killing several innocent Iraqis. In Takrit, gunmen attacked a police checkpoint west of the city, killing a policeman and injuring three others, and as the police reached the place, the gunmen detonated a car bomb, killing four policemen and injuring two others. The attacks came after 19 Iraqis were killed and dozens were injured in different attacks north and south of Kirkuk. 
After the end of the first stage of the referendum on the constitution imposed by the Egyptian president, Mahmoud Morsi, he refused to listen to the Egyptian people who called for postponing this process and adjusting the draft constitution according to the aspirations of the Egyptian community. Some legal organizations registered certain violation in the first stage of the process. The operation room in the Club of Judges in Egypt said that it received more than 400 complaints from citizens concerning the these violations, which included the lack of judges observing the process in the committees. Legal Egyptian organizations called for repeating the process and eliminating the results of the first stage because of these violations. As chaos and lack of security continued in Libya, two police stations were targeted in simultaneous attacks in Benghazi today morning. A police source said that an explosive device was thrown at an empty car parked in front of Karyunis police station in western Benghazi, while another explosive device was thrown in front of another police station in the east of the city, damaging a front wall. The attacks came a day after assailants fired a rocket-propelled grenade at a Benghazi police compound that houses patrol cars damaging an office and killing one policeman. A gun battle followed and three of the police reinforcement who arrived at the scene were killed. Libya announced yesterday closing its borders with Algeria, Niger, Chad and Sudan as a result of the deterioration of the security situation in the south of the country. The Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad cancelled a visit to Turkey today. The Director General of International Affairs in the President's office said that the cancellation was because the President was busy. The visit was supposed to be on the basis of an invitation from the Turkish Prime Minister in order to attend a celebration in the city Qunya to commemorate the great Iranian poet Jalal al-Din al-Rumi who lived in the 13th century. The chairman of the Iranian Shura Majlis Ali Larijani criticized the countries that hindered negotiations with the six states about Iran's peaceful nuclear program. The Iranian Foreign Minister Ali Akbar Saleh described negotiations with the International Agency of Atomic Energy as acceptable. They dealt with a new framework agreement that would enable both sides to reach many common points. He pointed out that Iran and the agency reached agreement on most issues. All the two issues were postponed till January 16. With this, we conclude our news bulletin for today. Thank you for watching. For more information about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. And now over to latest business and market news with Nariman Qassam after a short break.